We will be seeing an important subject today. And uh, you see, in this world today, when you look around, especially on televisions and all these things, we see a lot of healings taking place. Healings, miracles, wonders, okay? And uh, lots of doubts has been arised, lots of doubts. Uh, uh, people don't believe, some people believe, some people believe not. And um, a lot of things are happening today. Okay, some claim to have this, um, um, some, some claim that they have the gift and they are able to perform it and they are able to uh, heal people. Okay, and uh, yet we see the hospitals filled with sick people okay uh, some people uh, claim to be really healed and a lot of things uh, we see in the world today so today I will like to uh, discuss with you and teach you and study along with you on the subject called healing fact false and fake healings fact false and faith so that will be the topic of today's discussion and as we are going to study previously I have spoken uh, a bit about on this subject but I'm going to take you more further in other uh, with other verses and we are going to see in today's study we will see why Christ performed miracles okay why Jesus healed the sick and then we see about the apostles uh, doing healings. And then we find about Apostle Paul unable to do in sudden age. And then as we see all this, we, as we build our foundation uh, for today's study. And then we are going to ask three questions. Uh, we are going to answer a question with three different, uh, in a three different steps. You see, what we find today is, uh, even though there are many people who, you know, they, as we see today's teaching, uh, as we see in today's world, um, a lot of fake and false miracles, yet in the midst of all this, there are people who claim to be genuinely healed uh, in those uh, meetings which uh, uh, you know in those meetings where basically the 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 person and the the healer the fake healer is not a prophet of God yet we uh, we come to hear that some people claim to be really healed okay now we are Bible believing Christians so we believe that God still heals the sick amen we know we are we are not um, uh, we, we are not people who do not believe in healings. We believe that God can heal and we believe God still heals. But we also believe that God heals in His time and for His glory. Amen. Amen. It is not something that you go to the fish market and you get it. It is not like what today people are showing in television in all these crusades. So we will study today. And uh, we will go through scriptures and we will find out for ourselves. And so, for today's teaching, we will title it as Healing False uh, uh, Fact False and Fake. Okay? There are people who are getting healed. There are people who get healed in the midst of false teachers and false pro uh, prophets. And there are people who claim to be healed when they are not. Okay? So, fact, false and fake. And we will study on that. Now, if you will ask me about me, God has healed me several times. Uh, even in my childhood days... I was not born as a healthy child. I had my own sickness. And, uh, you know, my parents took me to all the hospitals. Uh, and um, I was not able to be cured by the doctor's medicine. And so the doctors gave up. 
And so some preachers or some pastors or some believers who came to my home or uh, encouraged my parents to uh, fast and pray for my healing. And so they did fast and pray for my healing. And since then I was healed and, and never again I was attacked with that sickness. Amen. Uh, but that sickness did not make uh, anybody of any one of us as Christians. In fact, they still continued to be in the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, they were staunch Roman Catholics. And we were all brought up as strong uh, Roman Catholics, no matter what healings took place. So one thing you must understand, healings will never save people. Only the preaching of the word of God and believing in Jesus Christ saves people. The more people look at the miracles and healings, what we find today is their heart gets more hardened, like what we saw, uh, see in the lives of Pharaoh. You see, God did miracles and He um, wanders through the hand of Moses and Aaron. And what happened to Pharaoh? Did he ever get converted? No. His heart was hardened. We see God did great things in the midst of the people of Israel. And yet they disbelieved. Yet they disbelieved. Okay? And um, so miracles and healings or these things never saves people. It might bring them closer or it might harden their heart. But only the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, only the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses the sinner and saves the sinner and gives them eternal life. Amen. So today's teaching we will see the first thing we will find out why Jesus Christ performed miracles or why Jesus healed the sick. We're going to answer that question today. Why Christ performed miracles or why Christ did healings? To answer that question, turn your Bibles to John chapter 20. Gospel of John chapter 20. In the Gospel of John chapter 20, we shall read verse 30. And 31, verse 30 and 31. And the word of God says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. Amen. Yeah. Now that why Jesus performed miracles or why Jesus did healing. The first thing as we read this is doing things in front of his disciples. He is, uh, he is performing all this in the presence of his disciples. He did other signs in the presence of his disciples. And all his disciples were Jews. And so the first thing what we see is... He was doing it to identify himself as Israel's true Messiah. He was identifying himself as Israel's true Messiah. Okay? And, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that he might believe. Okay? That Jesus is the Christ. He was doing these signs to uh, tell the people or to identify himself as the Messiah, the true Messiah of Israel. Okay? So he was doing that in the midst of the, uh, the disciples that they might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Okay? The, the Son of God and that believing he might have life through his name. So one of the reasons that he was doing is to identify himself, okay? To identify himself. Okay? As a true Messiah of Israel. Second thing we'll find, why Jesus did healings and uh, miracles and other signs. Uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, 
In the book of Acts chapter 2, if you turn and go to, uh, go to verse 22, here we read, the word of God says, E man of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Okay? Now why was Jesus doing it? As we read this, read it again. He man of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. He was doing these healings and miracles to confirm the new revelation he was bringing to the nation. In order to confirm the new revelation that he was bringing to the nation of Israel, what he was doing? He was doing it, he was showing it through miracles, wonders and signs. And he was approved of whom? Approved of God. He was, he, it was to confirm the new revelation. Okay? To confirm the new revelation that he was bringing to the people of, uh, to the nation of Israel. The third thing we will find in Matthew chapter 9. In Matthew chapter 9. Why Jesus performed miracles? Or why Jesus performed miracles, signs and healings and all? Matthew chapter 9 verse 6. And the word of God says, But that he may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Okay, now he is healing a man who is, who, is, uh, who is sick of palsy. Okay. He is telling to that person who is in sick. He is healing that person. Why? The Bible says, but that he may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive what? Amen. To forgive sins. Okay. So that he may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he was performing or healing this miracle. Uh, he was doing these healings and uh, performing these miracles to identify himself as the, uh, as the true Messiah of Israel. To confirm the new revelation he was bringing to the nation. Okay? And that, uh, that, uh, that people may know that he has the power... To forgive sins. Then one more thing we will find. And we will turn our Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 11 over there. With one hand in Matthew chapter 11 and the other hand turn to Isaiah 35. Matthew chapter 11. In one hand, in the other hand, Isaiah 35. There are four reasons why Jesus performed miracles and healings and other signs. The first is to identify himself as Israel's true Messiah. The second is to confirm the new revelation he was bringing to the nation. And so in order to confirm the word... What he was doing? Signs and wonders. Okay, and he was approved of God. The third thing, uh, does, uh, so that the people may know that he has the authority to forgive sins. Okay, and then the fourth we will find now in Matthew chapter 11, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show again, those things which you do, hear and see. The blind receive their sight. 
and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now here what is happening is, John the Baptist is in the prison. Okay, we read in verse 2. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John the Baptist is in the prison now, and now he is doubtful, is Jesus the true Messiah, or should we look for someone else? Okay? And so then Jesus is telling to the disciples of John, saying, go and tell him what you see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen? Amen. So Jesus was doing it for what? We, we will see in Isaiah 35. He's quoting, okay? In Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 and 6. But we'll read from verse 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap, as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Amen? Amen. So Jesus is performing the miracles as a fulfillment of Messiah's promise. In the book of Isaiah 35, there is a promise, uh, there is a prophecy that the Messiah is going to do that. And so in Matthew chapter 11 verse 4, we read, Christ is fulfilling that Prophecy. Okay, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the lame walks. Okay, and so we see why Jesus is performing healings and miracles. We, find, we found out that he was doing it to identify himself as his royal true Messiah. And that to confirm the new revelation he was bringing to the nation. And that the people may know that he has the power to forgive sins. And it was to full, as a fulfillment of messianic prof, uh, promise. Amen? Amen? So these are the reasons why Jesus was performing. Miracles, healings, and other signs. Then why were the apostles performing miracles? What was the reason the apostles were performing miracles? Turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark chapter 11. Gospel of Mark chapter 11. I mean sorry, Mark chapter 16. The last chapter. And when we come to Mark chapter 16, he is speaking to the apostles here. Okay? In verse 14 we see there are 11 people gathered over there. The 11 apostles. One fellow is where now? How many apostles Jesus had? What happened to one fellow? You are there 11. What happened to the other one? He? He? Hanged himself. One, one day, one, one fine day, one, go, one guy got really mad at home and he took a rope. He went, he went, he wanted to hang himself and die. Okay? So he took a rope, he tied to the tree and uh, he wanted to die by hanging himself. So he caught, his, uh, caught the rope, put the knot and he was putting his neck inside the rope so that he can break his neck and died as he was putting the neck inside the rope he saw a cobra in front of him and he left his neck and he ran home you see that this man wanted to die but he saw the cobra and he ran home okay and so Judas did not see a cobra there so he just hanged himself and he died well, here what we find in Gospel of Mark chapter 16 is Jesus appeared to the leaven afterwards, verse 14, afterward he appeared unto the leaven as they sat at meat. 
and unbraided them with the unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now he's speaking, okay, he rebuked his, uh, his uh, you know, he's um, upbraided them with, because of the unbelief. He is speaking to the leaven. And then what he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay? In verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. To whom is he speaking? Huh? To whom is he speaking? His to his apostles. How many apostles? Eleven. Eleven apostles. So he's telling them. And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. Uh, uh, believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Okay. We have to count now. How many are there? Uh, what is that? In my name? Cast out devil, they shall speak, in speak in new tongue, take, take, up serpent, serpent. <laughs> take up serpents and they shall, no take up serpents and what, if they, if they take up serpents, if they no 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 no, tell me the third one, if they shall take up oh, what will happen, okay then, Okay, fourth one is deadly thing, poison. Okay, then. He shall not hurt them. Then. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Okay, now I will read it. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How many? Huh? Five. Okay. He's saying if they believe, what they will do? If they believe, they will do all this? Five. is not saying just three. It's not saying just some people will be given to two and some people will be given five and some people will be given four. Okay, if they believe they are going to do these five things, that will accompany them. Okay, and what we find was these five things was given to the apostles. Okay, and they did it. Okay, and then uh, what we find today in people who say they can't do all this five thing. They say, oh no, I'm only, I'm only gifted to uh, speak in tongue. I don't, I'm not able to do other five. Some say I am only able to do the last two. The other three I cannot do. Okay, no. If you believe, you will do these five things. Okay, if you believe, you're going to do all these five miracles. So what, and today we don't find such people. Okay, so by that we come to know in verse 14, it was specifically given to the 11 apostles. Okay, and then later we find Apostle Paul was chosen by Jesus himself and he was added into it. Then why the apostles did this miracle? In verse 19. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and, and confirming what? Confirming the word. Okay, and... Okay, confirming the word with signs following them. Uh, signs following, amen. So why did the apostles, uh, were, why the apostles were performing healings and miracles? For the confirming the word. That time we did not have the New Testament, right? 
The apostles did not have New Testament, nor the new Christians who were getting saved had any final authority as the New Testament. And in order to make people believe whatever they are saying is true, what they had to do? They had to work these signs and wonders. Why? So that they can confirm the word. Why Jesus was doing it? Confirming. The new revelation that he was bringing to the nation. The apostles were doing the signs and wonders and miracles. Confirming the word. So when the people heard them speak. They wanted to believe. And so the people of Israel. They saw miracles and they believed. Who, who need signs? The Jews require sign. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. And so, they were doing this to confirm the word. Now, I'm going to show you something. Okay, the last, uh, last month, one preacher, I forgot his name, in America, a Pentecostal charismatic fellow. You know, his father, long year, many years back, his father uh, brought uh, deadliest poisonous serpents in the church. Okay, and he said, uh, they, you know, he wanted to show to the people that, uh, nobody, you know, that the serpent is, uh, the serpent, even if the serpent bites him, is not going to die. And so he brought that deadly serpent while preaching, he was playing with the serpent, and the serpent beat him and he died. Okay? He died. Just last uh, month, his son did the same thing, and the serpent died, and he was taken to the hospital and he died. Okay, why? Because they are not apostles, they are false apostles. Okay, but when there's apostles, they will not die. And what we find here in, uh, uh, we will see in, in Acts chapter 28. Book of Acts chapter 28. This is perhaps the last miracle that took place. And it was to show that Apostle Paul is the Apostle. Acts chapter 28, verse 1 through 10. And I will read. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people, barbarous people showed us no, no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one. Because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks. Okay, yeah. And laid them on the fire. There came a wiper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Okay. And when the barbarians saw the venomous bees hang on his hand. They said among themselves. No doubt this man is a murderer. Whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to leave. And what he did? And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. You see that? He is an apostle and that's why he is a, he is a genuine apostle. And this was the last miracle that took place in the Bible. And it was to prove that apostle Paul is an apostle. And so what happened? The snake, the venomous snake came on his hand. It fastened his hand. But he just shook it and it did no harm. Okay? That's a sign of an apostle. That's why, and we find in the, in the book of Corinthians, Paul is telling, "I have done all the miracles." Okay, which means he was telling about uh, the the Mark chapter 16's miracle that he was speaking about. All these five uh, five things, I, I, you know, I don't know where the verse is. Maybe uh, no, he's proving his apostleship. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so 
um, what we find here, we, we saw that Apostle Paul, here we find him, uh, you know, with a, with a snake. The snake came on his hand, okay? But, you know, it fast, though it fastened his hand, yet nothing happened, no harm took place. You know why? Because that was the promise of Christ. Christ said, okay, you will go and if the snake comes on your hand and if they beat, you will not die. And uh, Apostle Paul did not die. Nothing happened to him. Well, turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 3 now. Book of Acts chapter 3. In the book of Acts chapter 3, we see in verse 6, Then Peter said, now you know this story, Okay, the the one um, a man, you know, a certain man, lame from his was to from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily uh, at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, "Look on us," and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Is Peter praying over there? Is he praying and pleading to God? No. He's commanding to that person. I com I know what he's saying in the name of Jesus. I it says, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and Walk. He's commanding that guy. Okay? He is not praying to God, Lord, please have mercy on me and listen to my prayer. He's just telling, stating to that person, get up and walk. You know why? Because he had the gift of healing. Okay? When a person has the gift of healing, you don't have to go around and pray. When you have the gift of healing, you say and it will happen. Okay? You say and it will happen. Your Paul Peter is an apostle. He had all these uh, gifts in him. Why? God had given them for the confirming of the world. And so he told to that man, the, the man in, in the temple of, in the gate, what he said, rise, okay? He said, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And what happened to him? Verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. It's not like today's people, you know, say, oh, and then, you know, they come with the crutches up and then they throw the crutches and they say, okay, you need some practice now. You see, when God, Jesus heals, he heals them immediately and absolutely, completely. When Jesus, uh, when P and the apostles did what they did, they healed them immediately and Completely. There was not, oh, you need some practice. Oh, every, oh, you need some time to practice. Nothing like that. Okay? It happens immediately and completely. Okay? Then we find, so we found here, Peter is commanding this guy. He's just telling him, get up and walk. And he immediately gets up and he walks and his bones receive strength. We find in Acts chapter 9. Book of Acts chapter 9, verse 40. Okay? Now I'm taking you, taking you from scripture, showing you verse, I took you from, you know, I, I showed you about Jesus Christ, and I showed you why apostles did miracles, and, and now we are seeing from book of 2, chapter 2 of Acts, we are just moving towards, okay, Towards the other chapters. And, and, and so I'm just showing you verse from here and there. The Bible says you're a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay? So, Acts chapter 9 verse 40. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down. What happened? In verse 38. And verse 37. And came to pass in those days that she was sick. Who? Verse 36, now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named what? Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deed, which she did. You see that? Lots of women have the apostle. They had a very important 
uh, ministry. Uh, they had a lot of work to do in the ministry. Okay, they were helping the apostles. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was near there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay and come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments with Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise! And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter... She sat up. Now what he did? He knelt down. He prayed. And then what happened? He told her, Tabitha, arise. There he did not pray. In the book of Acts chapter 2, did he pray? No, he did not pray. Now in Acts chapter 9, what do we find? Now he's praying. And then he's commanding. He prayed and he commanded. Okay, he prayed and he told her, Tabitha, arise. And then what happened? Huh? And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hands and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows presented her alive. She was dead. And now she is alive. When the apostles, why did the apostles do all these miracles? Confirming the word. Because that time the new written New Testament was not available. And so in order to confirm whatever they are speaking, they had to confirm something. There's nothing to back up. Today whatever I'm preaching, I am backing up with what? Showing you the scripture. Okay, today the Bible confirms what I'm saying. In those days when the Bible was not written, what was... Uh, what? Did they use to confirm the word? Signs, wonders. Okay. And now, turn to Acts chapter 19. We saw into what happened. He did not pray. He just said, in 9 we saw he prayed and he sang. And now in Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19 verse 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. You know what's happening? Paul is not responsible. Paul is not knowing. But what happened? From his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs. Or aprons and diseases departed from them. Okay? Aprons and handkerchiefs. So they might have asked Paul to pray or they might have touched him and taken and put it on the sick. And what happened? The people were? Healed. They were getting healed. Okay? Where are we? Okay. Verse 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirit went out of them. Amen? Amen. In the other places we see, you know what? When the apostle passed and the shadows fall, what happened? People rose and they were healed. Okay, why? And, and those days, whatever they were doing was genuine. Nobody questioned it. Nobody doubted it. It was genuine. Okay, and so we find here in Acts, what in Acts chapter uh, uh, 3, verse 6, uh, 3, verse 6, what we found, we saw Apostle Peter and John telling that man, Rise up and walk. In Acts chapter 9, verse 40, Peter praying and raising the dead. Okay, and in Acts chapter 19, we saw the handkerchiefs and aprons from the Apostle's body 
uh, was taken and you know they put on the sea and the evil spirit went out of them. Okay? Now, suddenly we see something is happening. Okay? We see the dead is raised. The evil spirit is going out from because of the aprons and handkerchiefs. The lame is walking. Okay, and then we also saw the last miracle. What is the last miracle that took place? Serpent. Book of Acts chapter 20. 28. Okay, serpent. Verse 1 to 10. And it was fulfilling Mark chapter 16. Verse 18. Now suddenly something is happening. And we are going to see what's happening. Here what we saw, we saw the Bible was not written, the New Testament was not written. And in order to confirm the word, what was following them? Signs followed them. Okay? To confirm the word. And so they were doing everything genuinely. And then suddenly something is happening. And what is that? Turn your Bibles to Philippians now. As we move ahead. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 25 to 30. Now, you know what? Okay, look at me. See ya. Apostle Paul, you remember that person was sitting on the window? And Apostle Paul was just preaching like me, boring sermon. And that guy felt sleepy. Okay? Because Paul was not a great orator, right? He was boring. But yet he was preaching with power. And that fellow sitting on the window, what happened? Ah, he fell asleep. He said, what? This fellow is boring preacher. He fell asleep from top. He fell down and he died. And then what happened? Apostle Paul rose him. Raised him up. He rose up. Okay? And so we find all this thing happening. The handkerchief is going, the power is going, and the, 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 you know, what, what happened? The, uh, the devil's evil spirits are going out of the people, and um, the lame walks, and, and everybody is getting healed here. Okay? They are just saying. They are just, and, and in a certain place they prayed, and then said, suddenly, these great apostles were able to do great things. Something is happening because something is coming into existence now. Okay, we find a shadow covering something. You know what? These things were done greatly in order to confirm what? The word. The word. Why? Because the word was not available. The written word was not available. And so this was shining. What? The signs confirming the word. Now, the New Testament is being written and it is slowly being complete, is getting completed. And that time something is happening. In Philippians chapter 2, we find in verse 25, okay, through 30, Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you, if I for it is, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness. Because that he had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him. And not on him only but on me also. Lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. You know what's happening? I send him therefore more uh, send him therefore the more carefully that when ye see him again he may receive, and that I may be the less sorrowful, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such in reputation, because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward him. In. Yeah, what happened? If our editor is working with Apostle Paul and he was sick and Paul was not able to heal him now. And he was sick nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him and God raised him up. 
Amen? Amen. But Apostle Paul was not able to do. Once upon a time, what was happening? Aprons and handkerchief would go and people were getting healed. He would just say a word and people were getting healed. The shadows of the apostles would pass and people were getting healed. Right? Here, he is not. God had mercy on him here. Apostle Paul is not saying, you know, he's not laying hands on him and praying and healing him. No. You are so nigh unto death. You are so sick. Then we find, slowly see what is happening. Now come to sec, uh, First Timothy, of uh, Second Timothy, chapter four. Second Timothy, chapter four. In Second Timothy, chapter four, verse twenty. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus, you got it? Second Timothy, chapter four, verse twenty. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum. What? What? Trophimus have I left at Miletum? Sick. Sick. Paul is not able to heal him now. His, Paul is unable to heal him. He left him sick at Miletum. And Paul is traveling alone. But in the book of Acts what we were seeing. We were seeing that Paul was able to heal people. Here he is not able to heal him. He's saying I left him sick. Why? Something is going out of Apostle Paul as something is getting complete. As something more important is coming up, something that is less important is submersing down. Apostle Paul here is not able to heal. He is living Trophimus at Militum sick. It's not healing him. Now to see in 1st Timothy chapter 5. 1st Timothy chapter 5. Verse 23. 1st Timothy chapter 5 verse 23. Drink no longer water. Drink no longer water. But use or drink. Use is not saying drink, okay? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine own infirmity. That's different between drink and use. Okay? You use medicine only when you are sick. You drink water all the time. Okay? Drinking has drinking water has no side effect. You just drink. It's necessity. Okay? But medicine, you don't have it all the time. You just use it when necessary, when you are sick. Okay, so your Timothy is living in Ephesus where the water, you know, he's living in a certain place doing ministry. The water is, contem uh, is very, uh, what do you say, contempt. Okay, the water is not pure and it is now affecting his stomach. And so Paul is not able to pray for him and heal him. And so Paul is telling to Timothy. You see, Paul could have, told, you know, healed him. But Paul is writing to Timothy and saying, Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine orphan infirmities. Now most people who just want to, uh, what do you say? Uh, want to, uh, you know, justify drinking alcohol. They say, hey, see. He gave him permission to drink. No, he didn't give him the perm permission to drink. He says, use. Use a little wine. 
not drink a little wine he's saying use a little wine so it could be I don't know but it could be just to apply on his stomach near the navel so that his stomach ache may stop or it might just also be drink uh, in uh, take inside drink a little use it literally okay taking inside uh, because of his stomach as a medicine Okay, or it might be just applying it on his navel part where the stomach, because when he applies it on his stomach part, what happened? The stomach ache goes. You see, sometimes in the stomach pains much, we apply coconut oil on our navel, right? So that the stomach ache may subside. Okay, so maybe uh, Paul told to Timothy to apply it. He said, just use as a medicine, whether it applied outside or take a little inside. It was told to take it as medicine. Okay? So, now the point here is, Apostle Paul is not able to heal Timothy. So, he's telling to Timothy, use a little wine. Okay? So, what we saw in book of Acts, we saw everything, all these signs and wonders and miracles happening. You know, people getting healed, where the lame is raised, and uh, is able to walk. And um, the dad is raised and, and the evil spirit is gone even through the aprons and handkerchief. And suddenly we find in Philippians, Apostle Paul is not able to heal by saying God had mercy on Epaphroditus. Then when you come to First Timothy, we find he leaves Trophimus sick at Militum. He is not able to heal him. Then we find here in First Timothy, we find he's not able to pray for Timothy and heal him. But rather he says, come on, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and infirmities. Why? Because something greater is coming and this something lesser is going down. Okay? Then we find, okay, uh, so what is God's plan? You know what is happening? See, in uh, come to... Corinthians, let's see about Apostle Paul himself. His, what is happening to him? Uh, where is it? Huh? For 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 7 through 10. You know what happened? <clears throat> Paul was given much revelation. <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> much revelation, and and uh, and uh, you know he's saying I, uh, and he was able. He, he did lots of miracles and great signs and wonders, and suddenly, you know, he's not able to do. It. And then we find something over here why he's not able to do it, and then why something is great coming. Let's see about himself in his own body what's happening. Verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Okay? So what we find is, Paul is saying, you know, since I was doing all these miracles and I'm, you know, all these things, great things, and I was given abundance of revelation, since I should not become proud, you know, what is happening? God, you know what? It says, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He prayed now. He prayed three times to the Lord to take that thorn in the flesh away from him. Verse 9. And he said unto me, God said, Jesus says to the, uh, Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. This is a sign of a mature Christian. He prayed, and God did not heal him. So he says, I take pleasure in infirmities, in necessities, in reproaches. 
In persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for I am, when I am weak, then am I strong. So it says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in, in my infirmity, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul is praying, is not getting healed. Christ is saying, My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. The plan of God now. You see what we find. Christ did miracles. Why? And we saw why the apostles did miracles. But at the end of the time. And the Bible is getting completed. These people are not able to do miracles. When the Bible was not there. They were doing great signs and wonders. Confirming the word. Now the word is being written. And is, come, is nearing to completion. And as it is nearing to completion. What we find. These people are not able to do signs and wonders and miracles. Even Apostle himself was living in those days when that temporary gift was being taken away from him. And now he's not able to do it. He lived in that days to see that gift, gifts were taken away from him because the word of God was now being written and was nearing the completion. Amen? Amen. And now when we speak anything, something should confirm it. And that is the word of God. So when I speak, I need to show it from the scripture. This is what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. And so people ought to believe now what the Bible says. They should not believe based on signs and wonders. Now they have to believe based on what is written in the Bible. Amen. Amen. See in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. This is God's plan that we walk by faith and not by sight. Not by seeing the signs and wonders. But we need to walk by faith now. What is written in the Bible. Believe and walk by faith. One more verse I'll give you. John chapter 20. Gospel of John chapter 20 and verse 29. Verse 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You know who are the most blessed people? Not those who lived during the times of Apostle Paul. Who were doing signs and wonders. But you people who have not seen. But you have believed because what's written in the Bible. You just believed by faith. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus is saying. Blessed are they that have not seen. And yet have believed. Amen. Amen. And so now that we have built a foundation for this healing, we saw why Christ did miracles. We saw why the apostles did miracles. We have seen the apostles now, even the apostle Paul was living in the days when the gifts of healing, the temporary gifts was taken away from him as the Bible was com nearing the completion. Now he's not able to do. You know, we read in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, 9, and 10. When that which is perfect will come, then those things which are in part shall be done away. And the perfect is the Bible, the Bible. And the perfect is come, then those things which are in part shall be done away. When the Bible, the complete Bible was given to us, those temporary gifts seized and done away because today God wants you to believe what the Bible says because Peter says you know what in first Peter chapter 1 Peter said something what is what he said let's see in first Peter what Peter says uh, is it first Peter or second Peter chapter 1 You know, he speaks about, okay, Second Peter chapter 1. In verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, 
when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now it's speaking about Peter, James and John being in the Mount of Transfiguration and they are hearing the voice and they are seeing the glorified Jesus and they saw Moses and Elijah and verse 19 and we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. He's saying something more sure of is there and that's the word of prophecy, the more sure word of prophecy. Speaking about the written word of God. Whereunto ye do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn. And the day star arise in your hearts knowing this word that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So Peter is saying we heard, we saw. But you know what? There is a more sure word of prophecy and that is the Bible. And, if, and you will do well if you take heed to the written word of God. Amen? Amen? Well, so the word of God, the apostles are now saying, you know, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when that which is perfect, which is the word of God, okay, it's a new agenda. That which is perfect is come. Then that those things which are in part shall be done away. When the Bible is perfect, is calm. In the Bible, the New Testament canonized is completely given to us. When that is given to us, when it is canonized, complete. Okay? When what will happen? Those things which are in part, the temporary gift shall be done away. Peter tells us, you will do well if you take heed to the written word of God. Okay. Now. We are going to answer these questions. How about those healings that are taking place? Some people claim to be genuinely healed in some of the healing, so-called healing crusade. How about that? How come people are getting healed? We are going to answer that questions now. Okay? So healing is through many ways today. Okay? Now as much as I deny the charismatic crusade healing, which are many a time planted by the organization of the fake faith healers, there are also possibility of people getting healed in those meetings. Okay, now somebody asked me this question, so I had to answer, and I sent this, so I said, I'll teach you this. Okay. You see, I'm very doubtful about these charismatic things and all this thing. I do not believe in all this thing. Most of them are fake most of the people who come on the stage are planted by those people who are organizing it. Even in the midst of all these things, there are possibility of people getting healed in those meetings. And so we will see, we will answer in three things. The first thing we'll see, God indeed can heal some who are truly praying to the Lord Jesus Christ despite, despite their sex and church. You see, People go for these great healing crusades and, and, and all these meetings and, you know, we find all these things. Most of the things, and most of the things are all planted, you know, the people with the healing, with the crutches and all these things come up. They are pretenders, okay? They are pretenders. They have been paid. Okay? And, uh, but there are some people who are not aware and they just go in the meeting and, uh, you know, they are not even on the stage. Okay, giving testimony. All those fellows who give testimonies are the ones who are planted or they are forced to give testimony just saying, just believe that you are healed. Even if you are not healed, you just believe that you are healed and give testimony and then God will heal you. They have been forced to give testimony. Okay, and some innocent people, they give, go and give testimony and come home. They are same. They are not healed. Some people are planted and because they are paid. You, we will pay you this much. You come and pretend as you are healed. Throw off your crutches, run around, okay? Shout this, and we'll pay you. We'll pay you so much and so many things. Well, even in the midst of all, some people claim to be healed, and how are they healed? Like for example, I told you, okay, I was not healed in the healing crusade. I was healed right in the house, okay? Uh, when my parents prayed, okay. So God indeed can heal some who are truly praying. 
to the Lord Jesus Christ despite their church. Some people are innocent. They don't know exactly the whole right doctrine. But their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ may be absolutely true. Okay? And so, in spite of the false evangelists, the false apostles or the false prophets, some are very much... Uh, so, what happened? God um, indeed healed some people despite their church, despite the false preachers, false teachers and evangelists. Some are very much ignorant of the true doctrine, but their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is what heals them. You see that? Some people are totally ignorant of the true doctrine, but they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not know much about, but they believe that Jesus Christ, okay? They believe that Jesus Christ can heal, and uh, uh, you know what? They are sincere, they are seeking for that, and they are going behind Jesus Christ. They are praying, crying out unto Him. You know, sometimes God does heal such people. Now, you do you remember that lady who came to Jesus Christ? You know, and Jesus called her dog. If I just call you something, you know, you'll come to church next Sunday? No. <laughs> oh, brother, you preach like that. I, you, know, you know what? That lady went to Jesus and Jesus called, him, or called her what? Dog. Okay, let's see. But you know what? If a person is searching for the truth, no matter what a preacher says, if that person wants the truth, anyhow that person will believe and come. Amen. Amen. You know what? Uh, see in uh, Matthew chapter 15 now. Matthew chapter 15. In Matthew chapter 15 verse 26. Now what we are seeing is. You know we are saying that some people may. Okay, possibility may get healed in some of the healing crusade despite their church or the or the false prophet or preacher or evangelist, the false fake healer. Despite all this, some people might get healed. Why? In in Matthew chapter 15, verse 26. Okay, what we see is uh in verse 22, and behold a woman, verse 22, and behold a woman of Canaan uh, came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously waxed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, he's saying, I'm not come for the Gentile, but for the Israel. Then verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus is replying in verse 26. And he said, and he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Jesus is calling her dog. So I cannot, you know, it is for, I come for Israel, not for the dogs, not for the Gentiles. What is for Israel, what is for children, I cannot give it to dogs, I cannot give it to you. Verse 27. And she said, truth Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. You see, she didn't get offended. She knew where she can get the truth. In spite of all that. She said what? She still believed and she still came. And verse 27, and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Amen. Amen. Now this lady does not deserve it. She is not in the Israel. She is a G uh, Gentile. She is a dog. And Jesus saying, no, it's not for you. But yet she says, you know, she kept persisting. She believed in Jesus Christ. She came behind Jesus Christ. And then what happened? Jesus healed her. God, okay, God indeed can heal some who are truly praying to the Lord Jesus Christ despite their church, false prophet, false teachers, and false uh, evangelists. That's why we find, oh, I went to there and how I, I got healed. 
Maybe that person was really praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, not knowing everything, but crying out unto the Lord, and the, and the, and, and the motive of the heart was true. And God really saw the heart and healed. Okay? God indeed can heal. The second thing what we will find. So, you know, what happened is, uh, these people who just get genuinely healed, okay, possibly or might have been healed. You know, this is my opinion now. Whether you, lie, you may take it or not or leave it, okay. But such people does get saved in some point of time in near future. Just like I was. I was not saved when I was healed. I was in a Roman Catholic church. But my parents really prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ. He healed me. Later on, I got saved. Okay? So some people, God, you know, some people who are in some, you know, some of the meetings and all, they get healed. Okay? And they were crying out unto the Lord. They got healed. Okay? At some point of time, these people might get saved. Okay, second thing what we will find, Satan can heal. Satan can heal. Some people say, oh, but I got healed, man, what happened? I, I got healed, I went to that miracle. Yes, yeah, Satan can heal. Satan can heal. You know why? Because he wants the uh, glory. Now what we find is, why he heals, why Satan heals, there are some reasons why Satan heals. The first is, to take away the Bible from us piece by piece, until we wonder what piece of infallible scriptures are still left to us. All that he wants is, he wants to take away the Bible from you, so that you may no longer go and search the scripture and read the scripture. Because, oh, I'm getting healing, all this thing, I'm getting everything. You know, why should I read the Bible now? He wants to destroy your faith in the Bible. Okay? So all that he wants to do is, he wants to take the Bible away from you, and he wants to take the people away from the Bible. He, that's why he heals the people. Satan does heal. He wants the glory. Okay, what belongs to God. He wants the glory. So what we find here is, uh, Satan indeed can heal people and in this way he keeps people from getting saved because he has got their faith in a preacher, church, temple, mosque, guru, maula, etc. Satan heals people. So that they may not seek the truth. Because that's why today we find, hey, I went to that Catholic charismatic meeting. And I got healed over there in Porta. Or in Johnson Sequoia's meeting or that fellow's meeting here. So why should I be, I got healed there, God is there. And they are not even willing to accept the truth. They don't want to get saved. You know why? Because their faith is where? In that preacher. Their faith is in that meeting. Their faith is in that place. They don't want to accept the gospel now. And this is exactly what Satan wants to do. He wants the people to have their faith in a preacher, in a church, or in a place, and not in Jesus Christ. And so, he does heal. Satan can heal people so that he may take people, so that he can keep the people away from getting saved. Okay, that's why most of the, I, you know, one of, the, there is a person, one in our family itself, you know, the child was born with a leg, you know, crooked, and the parents took him, okay, to Porta, and they claim now to be healed, that his leg became straight or whatever, claim, okay, fine, but now you go and share the gospel to them, they don't want to do anything with Jesus Christ. They don't want to do anything with the Bible. They don't want to do anything with the gospel of grace. You know why? Because their faith is in the Catholic doctrine, in the Catholic church, because something happened over there. And this is exactly what Satan does. In order to destroy people's faith from Jesus Christ, he will heal people so that their faith is upon a church or in a place or upon a preacher, or on a priest. You see that? Getting it? Yes. Huh? So he wants to keep people away from getting saved, so he heals people. So that when you go and give the gospel to people, they say, no, 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 no. I got God with me. God has healed me. You see, but they do not know who healed them, actually. Satan heals. Look at the Muslims. They're also doing healings. Look at the Hindus. They're also doing healing. Why? 
Satan is doing that actually because he wants them not to get saved. He wants to keep them in darkness. He wants to take the Bible away from the people and he wants to take the people away from the Bible. Satan heals. Okay? So in all doing all this thing, what happened? Who gets the glory? Satan gets the glory. So he heals the people because he wants the glory. And so people's faith is very strong in those charismatic things. Oh, that preacher healed me. He put his hand. He healed me. Their faith is not in Jesus Christ. Their faith is in that preacher. That faith is in that preacher. Or if I go to that place, I may get healed. Not in Jesus, but in that place. You see why Satan does? He wants to keep them from getting saved. He wants the glory. The third thing, okay, for that we will find in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll just give you those verses for this. Satan can heal. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Ooh. Is it 2 Corinthians? Or oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Where is that? He transforms himself. Okay, chapter 11. Thank you. Oh, yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You know, just because they preach cry, preach about Jesus, doesn't mean they are, they are true preachers. Okay, the Bible says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's not, an, he's not the angel of light. He's transforming himself as... Angel of light. Okay. Uh, he's transforming. What's that? No marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose ends shall be according to their works. Okay. Satan is doing it. He transforms himself. Okay, into an angel of light. So he does all this so that he can keep the people from getting saved. He wants them to go to hell with him. He doesn't, he doesn't want them to have faith in Jesus, but in, in church, denominations, preacher, and all this stuff. And so people say, oh, if I go there, if I go to him, not to Christ. That is exactly what Satan wants, and he gets the glory. Okay, then second thing is Second uh, Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Speaking about the Antichrist. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders with all deceivableness of the unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they might believe a lie. You see, when people don't want to listen to the Bible and they don't want to put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, God will send a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Okay, God will harden the heart of the people. Okay, you, you don't want to trust what the Bible says, right? You don't want to trust in what Jesus did for you, right? And you just want to believe in your denomination and in that place and in that preacher. Okay, go and get that healing what you want and I'm going to send a strong delusion. 
that you will believe a lie and so people may get healed there because of Satan and their faith becomes strong on that you know why because they do not receive the truth so God says okay I'll send a strong delusion and what the Bible says even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders it's happening now Satan is doing it is preparing the way for Antichrist with all Benny Hinn, with all these um, fellows on the television that you see okay and the third thing we will see is psychosomatic the first thing is God indeed heals in spite of their church or false preachers or false teachers or false evangelists in spite of that God still heals some people who are genuinely seeking Christ even though they do not know what the truth is the whole doctrine and in, you know what and they may get healing then later on in some point of time they get saved by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ the second thing is Satan heals people so that they will he will keep them away from getting saved so that he'll keep them away from putting their faith in Jesus Christ so when Satan heals they'll believe in the place people person preacher okay in denomination and not in Jesus Christ and they will not get saved so that he can take them to hell with him he does that third thing is psychosomatic psychosomatic is something you know people get depressed and and all these tensions and they, their life becomes very this you know it is all that happens in mind and then they go for some kind of talks you know like if people go for you know yoga today they do yogas and all this, this is psychosomatic, it's satanic. Okay, this has been used today by seeker sensitive, feel good churches. I felt so good now. Okay, it's all mind game. Okay, and so psychosomatic is used by seeker sensitive preachers, psychologists, and yoga gurus, etc. This credit is given to nature's or natural techniques or Satan. Now, in regard to God dealing with believers true genuine believers if you are sick can God heal me yes God does heal if he wants in his time for his glory so if you are sick now what should we do when a Christian or when a genuine believer is sick what is God's plan how does God deal with a sick person in regard to God dealing with believer God's program is outlined in James chapter 5 Turn your Bibles to James chapter 5. James chapter 5 verse 13 through 15. Is any among you afflicted? James chapter 5. Got it? Okay. Verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him go to the healing crusade. Huh? What? What? Call, okay? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. He's not saying go to the tent meetings for healing crusades. You see one thing, if people, if Benny has the gift of healing, you know what he happened, what he should do? He should be going to all the hospitals and healing the sick. Right? Just say a word and they will be healed. You know what? They will not go to the hospitals and heal the sick. You know why? There you won't get money. So when you will have meetings in all those crusades, you keep big, big offering boxes, you'll make millions of dollars and money, all this thing. So come to my meeting, healing crusade, so you can get a lot of money. These same fellows who claim to have these gifts of healing, they will not go to the hospitals and heal the people. You know why? Because they don't have healing. They are fake. They are false. And that is the fact. Okay, so when a Christian is uh, sick, what the Bible tells us, is any among you, is, uh, verse 14, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, 
anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Amen. It's not saying if anybody is sick, go to the doctor first. It says if anyone is sick, call the elders of the church. Then they will pray. Now I'm not saying it's wrong to go to the doctors. Please don't. Okay. God, just as God gave teachers, just as God gave pastors to feed the uh, flock, just as God gave engineers for construction, just as God gave teachers for students to teach, He also gave doctors so that we may be cured from our sicknesses. Amen. God does use doctors and medicines. Okay. That's why in the last time and, and the last days when you read, you know about Paul. You know what happened to Paul? Paul was unable to heal himself. And Paul was living in sickness. You know, then Paul writes, no, Everyone has forsaken me. Except one fellow is with me. Who? Luke is with me. You know who was Luke? He was a doctor. And always Paul went with the doctor in all his missionary journey. Okay? Don't believe this false fellow. Oh, don't take medicine. Don't take doctor. No, no, no. That's wrong. Okay? God has given doctors and God used Luke who was a doctor. Okay? And so we find here in book of James chapter 5 verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. You know, you're speaking about the Lord shall raise him up. Glory goes to whom? The Lord. Jesus Christ. Okay? That's God's plan today for people to get saved. Uh, heal. If anybody sick, call the elders of the church. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. And God heals for His glory in His time. Sometimes God says, no, I want you to have this. And then that is the time where we have to say, you know what we have to say? Most gladly, therefore, I rejoice in my infirmities. For when I am weak, then am I? Strong. strong. That is a sign of a matured Christian. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, we have seen today, healing, fact, false, and fake. Fact, false, and fake. Come in, brother. Push the door. Okay? Fact, false, and fake. Jesus and the apostles, everything they did was fact. Today, what we see in healing crusades... False thing and fake thing. Even in the midst of false, some people get healed. Not because of anybody. Because God, because of God. Because they were seeking God. They were seeking and praying to the Lord Jesus Christ genuinely. And God does heal some people. Okay? And in near future, some people really get saved. By putting their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And trusting in His grace and in His bloodshed. Okay? Despite their church. Despite their... Uh, despite the false evangelist and the miracle, God still heals some people. Fake. Some people just pretend because they are paid. Okay? And Satan does heal people because he wants to destroy their faith in Jesus Christ. And he does not want them to get saved. And when a Christian is sick, the Bible tells him not to go to healing crusades where the fake and false fellows are there. He tells in the scripture to call the elders of this church and they will pray over you and the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. Amen. Amen. That's God's plan. God still heals and he can still heal because he is powerful and he is able to do it. But he does it for his glory and for his plan. Amen. Amen. And in his time. Not in yours and not in my time. But in his time. Amen. 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 You know what? If you read the church history, some of the greatest men of God who walked with God, they sometimes they died young and they died of sicknesses. Okay? Sometimes God says, okay, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul says, you know what? I rejoice so that the power of Christ may rest upon me, even in my infirmities. When you're sick, you get...